Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today, just want to have a casual conversation with all of you guys about Canadian housing market. Again, as a disclaimer to begin with, this video is not all about negativity. This video is not to discourage you from coming to Canada. This video is just to share my experience and what I can see around me with you guys so you guys can make a good judgment call. I just want to focus on the housing situation in here. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself. So I was here in Canada before COVID. I was here with my family for about a couple of years. Then I went back to Australia, then came back again after COVID. So I have seen before and after COVID. So this housing problem is a serious problem. So the first one that I want to mention is housing affordability. Housing affordability has, it's genuinely challenging at this point. For an example, for an example, and you can do your own due diligence, you can do your own research, and you can find out um, the actual story. And again, <clears throat> Canada is a big country, so you have different provinces, different cities. I am not going to talk about all of those other cities, um, even though it might be somewhat relevant, but I, I'm, I'm going to make this clear because I have not lived in every city in, in entire Canada. So I'm only focusing on GTA, which is a greater Toronto area, which means you have your Toronto, you have your Mississauga, you have Etobicoke, you have, you know, surrounding uh, cities. If you would get a two bedroom apartment before COVID, let's say the price was fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred Canadian dollars, two bedroom, two bathroom in a condo, nothing fancy, just a regular apartment that now is probably be 3000 to even more than $3,000, right? Plus you have to pay the utilities as well. So just to put the perspective out there, right? So in every single country around the, around the globe, or a majority of the countries, the price is going up, right? But the issue is here with Canada is, is you, you pay a lot of tax. Right. So all automatically you have this high expectation from your government that they will be doing things to sort of lower and give you lower the cost and give you the better quality of life. Uh, so what's the reason? The reason is pretty simple. If you understand the basic economics, the reason is very simple. You have less supply and you have high demand. Why do we have high demand? Because, again, this is the fault of the policy. Right. This is the problem with the policymakers. So they have opened the floodgate. The people are coming from different countries, right? As as an immigrant, as immigrants, uh, or visa holders, or students, and what have you, right? So they're just coming. But just think from a from a moment. Think for a moment. Let's say a big Boeing or big Airbus coming to Canada from somewhere, and it's full, fully loaded with all the immigrants, right? Highly qualified, highly educated, you know, good people. They're coming. Let's say in one flight. You can probably have, let's say, 300 people, right? So 300 people entering Canada within a few hours. But how long does it take for a building to be erected or to be built for these 300 people? How long does it take to provide jobs or create jobs or employment or business or economy, essentially, for these 300 people? And again, this is not a complaining video, but this is the, some of the things that I think people really, really should understand, right? Just because a country is welcoming to everybody else um, does not quite really mean they are doing good to those folks, to those people, right? You can bring people, no problem, but you got to have a, a good sustainable economy. You have, you have to have good uh, housing solution. You have to have the good education solution, healthcare solution, and all of this. So if you don't have those, just welcoming people is not going to make any any benefit or any good to anybody else. Next one is housing accessibility, which I just mentioned this point a few minutes ago, is that you have less supply. So if you have less supply, what do you got to do? You have to you have to build houses. You have to make the process simplified. You have to open new doors for the builders, for the construction companies, right? You gotta give them some benefit. You have to make things easy for them so that they can come in, they can build more for the people. The third item is the housing quality. And not many people talk about this. And I have been renting uh, here in Canada throughout my before COVID time and after COVID time right now as well. I've been renting. And now I'm not a civil engineer. I am not somebody 
um, who understand all the ins and outs of you know, building materials and, and the design and, and this and that, right? But all I care about, I'm paying high rent, so I should be able to live in a, in a good, good quality house, right? That's all I look for. That's what I review, right? Every time I go out for showings, and that is really problematic, right? You have flimsy structure, you have flimsy setups, um, right? The, the, the door knobs, from the door knobs to, you know, the kitchen, the kitchen to the bathroom, it's, it, it's all feels like very rushed, very cheap, very fragile quality. You live in a condo, a condo means, you know, there will be like hundreds of houses, hundreds of flats uh, or, or units, let's say. Uh, you can actually at night time or even evening time you can actually hear what's the you know the next door is talking about or, or they're laughing or they have some guests and whatnot you can actually it's 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 that it's that bad right it is that bad um i'm sure the older houses um uh, might be better but again there might be some other problems if i pay three thousand dollar for two bedroom and two bathroom then i want it to be a three thousand dollar worth unit I don't want to live in a place where it's $1,500 worth. The quality is $1,500 worth quality, but I'm paying $3,000, right? So keep that in mind when you, when you, you know, if you plan to come to Canada and if you are almost there in the middle of the process and you want to live in any of these major cities, and if you see the buildings are absolutely amazing, right? As I say, sometimes some of the newer ones, it looks like they're just piece of arts. Um, just go in, make sure you, you, you understand, just don't look at it from outside and say, okay, I'm living in here. Go inside, go for showing, review things properly, check everything properly, understand your family situation as value for money. Like I said, you're paying high, high rent, but what you're getting out of it, it's really, really not that great, honestly speaking. Um, 3000 again, this two bedroom, two bathroom, do not think that this is a thousand square feet, right? It's probably like 650, 600 square feet. The, the space so it's it's kind of matchbox it's it pretty much match matchbox right and the last one is client vendor i just made some notes in here client vendor relationship from my experience back in australia when you rent a place for example you rent a place you rent the place through an agency so you rent from them so if you have any problem you go deal with them you don't normally deal with the the owner what i'm finding here is you have agents as well from both the sides when you want to rent and then once the deal is done, then they just go in their own way. And then you have to pretty much deal with the owner yourself directly. That's okay, no problem. But what's ha also happening is that these days, the people are, you know, like I said, people are just trying to buy houses because they think the rent is high. So they want to buy houses to lower their monthly housing costs, which is not working anyway. But anyway, so you have a lot of new players in the market. You have a lot of new owners in the market. And majority of them this is the first time they're they, you know they purchased a place and they have rented so this is the first renter for an example they don't know how to deal with them so these are the some of the things to think about when you you know planning to move to move to move to canada um like i said the housing issue is a serious issue and again all of these other points you know you can probably you can probably make a balance you know either right or left but the first one is to actually even have the house first, right? Maybe some people coming to Canada with a lot of money, no problem. But then you run into another issue. That issue is you can't find any place, right? Um, anyway, so hope you guys um, got some beneficial points from here. Again, this video is not to belittle the, Can the Canadian economy, belittle Canada itself. Uh, to, to say bad things about Canada. These are the things again, like I said in the very beginning of the video Some of the things that I have experienced from my personal experience I just wanted to share with you guys whether you guys are already in Canada or outside of Canada planning to can come to Canada Hopefully this will be beneficial. Hopefully it will be sort of helpful for you to shape up your strategy your plan before you come in and We'll settle down your expedition as well so thank you so much for watching the video and I will, as I said, I'll probably make some other videos uh, on similar topics just to educate yourself, uh, you guys, um, through my video, uh, through my experience and hopefully that works out well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys sometime in the next video. Thank you so much.